Good morning. 6.30 a.m. Day two on a little deserted island. Not the best night of sleep, but to be fair, that's probably actually the best night of sleep we've had on one of our island mission. It was perfect breeze coming in the tent. We had a few moises coming in, but we put some mosquito cords outside the tent and that does the trick very well. So they're definitely lifesaver, those ones. And yeah, like this morning, it looks pretty nice weather in the distance. The wind this morning is coming actually northwesterly, so it's eating us. They will definitely try to go maybe around. But before that, we need a little drink. So this time we've decided to bring our tomahawk jet cooker from Bushback. The other cooker that we were bringing on the other um, island mission, they, it was just a bit too bulky and we realized it's obviously much more compact and it does the job very well, especially for boiling water. We can still use the pot and the pan to cook our food. Uh, so yeah, we made some small adjustment and that gave us a lot more room in our storage bag, our big duffel bag, and we could store, for example, like our dry food in the bag. So yeah, that was a good little swap. I think I'm um, happy with the change. And Chris is <laughs> cleaning the ants out of our bag. So we hung it up on a tree to make sure it didn't get eaten by rats. But, but um, it's just swarming with ants. <laughs> oh, Which is the is. only wildlife uh, yeah, we saw um, overnight, fortunately. We woke up at 11 p.m., 11.30. Um, the moon was quite, it's almost like a full moon, so we could actually see quite well on the beach. Uh, to see if we could see those turtles, but unfortunately we didn't see no any. No turtles, not this time. So we'll try again tonight. Alright, Chris is going to enjoy his drink. I'm going to have to wait. We only have one mug. <laughs> well, you got that one. Oh yeah, true. That's a giant mug. <laughs> and then we'll have breakfast and carry on with the day. Tuna jumping. <laughs> I'm gonna try and so much current here. They must be feeding, so I don't know, I don't have a flash or anything, so I'm just gonna jump in, see if see if one flies by. But this current here converging looks pretty dodgy. I'll keep an eye on you. And I'd say it's gonna be murky as hell. We'll see. So Chris is in the water. This bay where we are, like on the other side of the island where we camp, is actually so much more sheltered. So yeah, definitely the wind direction has a huge impact. And it's great that this island is big enough that we can actually go on both sides and there's like reef on both sides. So hopefully, yeah, today gets a better time. I was I, he broke my heart yesterday, he was so disappointed with himself and he's really hard on himself. He always put a lot of pressure and like he really wanted to get a good fish for us to have a nice dinner. Like, he tries really hard, he was there for like a few hours, even more. So yeah, it's tricky, it, it seems like harder than WA, the visibility is definitely not as good, way murkier. I guess the tides here are way bigger than the one we were used to in WA. 
So yeah, next is Pista Bellue a lot. We, we actually can't wait to get back. But yeah, for now we're still exploring what Queensland has to offer. Those islands are still amazing. I don't think there are many islands like this in WA. So yeah, we're definitely making the most of it for now. And yeah, hopefully today, better day for Chris. in the tip of my index finger off of my left hand um, I'm an idiot I thought it was a little cod and it was so murky and I shot it didn't realize it was a puffer fish and then when I've tried to remove the spear it's just bitten my the tip of my finger just clean off with its teeth so um, we've had to pack up in a rut in a hurry I'm in so much pain we're gonna have to see if we can get back and get to the hospital hey okay welcome from another island it has been <laughs> just on three weeks since the incident with the fish that you just saw it's been a pretty uh, full-on process actually yeah. so so completely my fault so I just want to make sure that's really clear so I'd been out sparing for must have been what maybe two hours yeah it was yeah at but... least two hours sparing trying to catch dinner for that night because we actually legitimately didn't <laughs> have any food for that night now it's mm been pretty murky so I've gone down and I've just gotten excited because I finally found one good size looking fish that'll be good for eating and complete case of misidentification I've thought it's some form of cod not one of these big potato cods that are illegal to shoot but just another kind of rock cod that I can so I've gone down before fully identifying the fish I've just shot it in the head thinking hell yeah we're gonna eat really well tonight i even saw it actually from like the boat uh, like i had a little clip i was like yeah we got a fish and yeah and then i saw the something. look on chris face and i was like oh he's not happy with it yeah so i felt pretty and I, I don't like shooting a fish that gets away after it's injured or you know i've never actually shot the wrong fish before this is the first time it's happened so i felt terrible because i've shot this what seems like a really cool looking puffer fish <coughs> Flight. <coughs> <coughs> okay. Oh, flies just gone right down my throat and into my tummy. <coughs> Sorry about that. I'm not having much luck on Touch. these islands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I just stop crying from that. So I've shot the wrong fish, right? So something I didn't realise about the puffer fish is most fish, most bony fish, have a, a gill plate. So you grab them with one hand and then you can get your knife out and stone the fish. But a pufferfish doesn't, it's just a mouth and this big gullet that expands. So there was nowhere for me to hold it to try and get this spear out. And I shot it relatively close. The spear had gone right into it real deep. I couldn't get it out. 
So I was basically thrashing around in the water for yeah. quite some time while Andrew was on the boat. And I've done the most stupid thing. So first of all, I've knifed it. So I've, I've killed the fish. It was dead, yeah. It was dead. Or at least it completely seemed dead. Um, and then I haven't been able to get my spear out. So, and I didn't want to put it on the boat. So I've stupidly somehow this left index finger I've tried to grab it on the face or something to get some purchase on it and try to maybe even get it between my legs. And this finger has just gone too close to its mouth. And I remember thinking the split like 1,000, like milliseconds of me going, oh my God, what have you done? This isn't gonna go, this isn't gonna go well because its mouth's open. Because when you kill a fish, their mouth comes open. It's one of the telltale signs it's dead. And this thing's got giant teeth and as my fingers near its mouth or going into its mouth or whatever I'm looking at its teeth going oh no this is going to be bad so I knew something was going to go down but it was it was all in the split so second yeah. and it just automatically like a guillotine just goes BAM and I've got my glove on and I've just seen my finger go whoosh, and, and retract like that like an automatic reaction just did this and I've gone <gasps> pulled the glove off and I've just seen just white like you know just flash so and i've gone oh my god and actually at the time i panicked and thought it was quite a bit more had been taken off than it was doesn't really matter anyway so, i yeah. freaked out i come to the surface i've yelled to oh Ange, come over come, fast yeah. she's taken a little while because she's going what's going on and well, i'm was, in full panic well yeah maybe for you and i was very close to chris i had seen him shooting that fish so I knew it was going to either pass it to me or something, so I was like boating like around him, like I really much like on I felt like it took pole. forever for Ange to come over, but it wouldn't have been. It would have just I been because I was panicking. I was just a few meters away, and when I heard him screaming, I thought of the worst right away. I mm. thought, I don't know, I, I probably thought of a shark at that time because I, I would have not thought of like obviously the fish. Yeah. Because it was quite a long time kind of like moving with the fish. And so I was screaming, it's bitten off my finger, you need to come right now. So she's come over, I've been swimming towards her. The only thing I've been able to do, because we're on the boat, and when we just do a little spearing mission, all of our stuff's back at camp, right? Yeah. So I've gone and just put it in my mouth to try and stem the bleeding. And that's when you saw the clip, there was like blood all in the boat and stuff, because it started to really bleed. And then we've back to the charged island. back to the island and just been driving. I've been yelling at her to go as fast as she can. Luckily, and she was still a bit tentative on the throttle. I was like, you have to go full throttle, get me back to this island. I've jumped out of the boat and immediately gone for the first aid kit. So luckily I bring a very small, yeah, basic first aid kit. Whereas we've got two larger ones in the truck, one in the cab, one in the back plus a snake bite kit, but we've, I've brought one that's kind of got like my multi-tool in it and a few mm -hmm. bits and pieces and a survival book and stuff. So luckily had stocked that with a good bandage and a compression wrap that you would use on maybe your ankle or a, or a bad wound. Stop the bleeding, yeah. Wrapped that, so I basically put some toilet paper on it. It to was stem huge. The, the bleeding, yeah, and then just wrapped this thing. And then, and I've still kind of been in panic. I'm going, oh man, oh yeah. man, I don't want to have to leave like the island. That's one of the first things going through my head is, oh, I don't want to, we don't want to have to pack up and I leave. I considered leaving everything yeah. on the island and just going. I was, like, was like, just pack the camp. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, I'm thinking it's going through my head. Okay, am I going to be okay? Can I just stop the bleeding? We can still do another night. And then I'm like, hold on a minute. There's sand, there's salt water. No we need it. to get back. So Ange I would have not let him. did an incredible job packed up the entire stuff some stuff not perfectly wrapped obviously <laughs> but packed the entire thing up didn't leave a thing at camp yeah it all goes in the boat that must have been within maybe 25 oh, minutes the fastest pack up ever <laughs> yeah and then boom we're on the boat we've got two hours to yeah, make 40, 40 kilometers back to shore so we're, we're going that way and it's yeah. luckily not as rough yeah as luckily good over. condition yeah because when we came over it was really rough so we've we've hit it I've directed Ange slightly in the wrong way with my phone, so we did a slight zigzag, yeah, and then basically got to shore after about two hours. Which and was that's very when... lucky with the tides as well. That the boat ramp where we go, it's very tidal. Past a certain point, you can't get in. Yeah. And that was the very last minute. It was so shallow. Luckily, we forgot got about boat. that. You could see <laughs> the motor churning up sand. It was like really touch and go. Yeah. If we lucky. couldn't have got to the boat ramp. We would have had to bring it up on a beach somewhere else yeah. and tie it up and just leave it with all of our gear in it. So it wouldn't have worked very well. So luckily we got into this boat ramp and then 
we had to basically pull the boat up and then carry by hand all of our stuff back to the Unimog, which yep. was in a caravan park not too far away, luckily. Then pull the boat in. By the time we got to the truck, my finger started to hurt real bad. When we were on the boat, it wasn't hurting weirdly. Yeah. I was doing some of the driving, it wasn't hurting that bad. On the boat, it said, don't be upset if we don't go to the hospital. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was like, I'm uh... thinking it's not actually hurting that bad. Maybe I'm overreacting and it's gonna be fine. And then got to the truck, after having carried everything and stuff, and man, the pain started to go up to like 10. So we... Um, I didn't want to have to open the bandage ourselves. Like I knew that it was going to be bad and yeah. I didn't feel confident with that. So I was like, I think we should go to and the And I hospital. was thinking, oh, I'm just going to sleep on it for the night. I won't unbandage it. We'll see what it's like tomorrow. Hopefully the blood would have clotted and it will be okay for me to look at. Ange took the initiative after getting upset, which was fair enough, and just started packing the truck up yeah, to get like ready that. to drive. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, I'm like, now you know what, I'll be okay. And then the pain just started to come in these massive waves that were like properly giving me like, like shocks. So jumped in the truck and then unfortunately I had to drive it to hospital, uh, which wasn't a lot of fun driving, obviously the stick shift maybe took 20 minutes to get to hospital. We went to Mackay Base Hospital, mm -hmm. ran into emergency. I just told the woman behind the counter, I was like, you look, look the fish has taken the yeah. tip of my finger off. Uh, all I'm gonna need is some antibiotics <laughs> and it to be redressed by a nurse. And she goes, no, no, mate, it's gonna be a lot more going on than that. And I was like, oh no, here we go. So- Emergency an... was super quiet that day. So emergency was, was quiet. They considered this a really serious, um, life-threatening um, injury due to the fact that it happened in a marine environment. It was an, a marine animal that got me, and it must have been at least bone gone or to mm -hmm. the bone, so bone infection. Yeah, so they saw me really fast. Um, nurse unwrapped my finger. Now. Just want a disclaimer, I'll put the photo up. It is pretty gross, uh, and I don't want to freak you out or freak your kitties out or anything like that. So I'll, let's do a three, two, one counter, and then I'm gonna put the photo up. So look away for 10 seconds or so if, if you're squeamish. So three, two, one. That's the finger. So it was definitely obvious that it needed to be properly worked on. I couldn't just go home with it. Okay, so photo off. So, so that uh, was really clear, like it was still pouring blood. Now, unfortunately, they didn't have anyone who could operate on my finger that day. It was busy. So yeah. a doctor came in, he was really nice, he was nice and straight up with me and said, look mate, I think you should just go home with some antibiotics and some painkillers. So they gave me Panadol Fort, which is um, Panadol and Codeine. They said, yeah, you're gonna have to go home. I don't think you're gonna get seen to tonight. We are gonna have to operate on this. And then, was that the day I had the x-ray? Did I have the x-ray the next yeah, day? Yeah, no, you had your x-ray that day. So I had an x-ray that day. Luckily, the fish missed the bone by like so a close. millimeter or not even in my finger. So I'm really lucky there. So went home, we, um, we drove back, didn't we? Yeah, we drove yeah. all the way back Caravan to the caravan park. park, slept. I wasn't in that much pain, to be honest. The Panadol Fort was working. Came back the next morning at 9 a.m. And in about a couple of hours, I was in theatre. They put me under general anaesthetic. It was a bit long. We had an appointment at 7 oh, true, yeah. and you didn't get seen until like 1 o'clock. So it was That's a long right. morning. Okay, so I went into theatre at 1 and then that took another easily two hours. So and I didn't have any update me on the other side like for the surgery. Like I find that hospitals for that I'm not used to it I find like the lack of update quite yeah frustrating but, like and I felt like the annoying partner asking like every hour so what's the update like yeah, what's going yeah. on but no props to um but they've been pro good. props to the hospital they were amazing so first up they had um put about four needles into my finger to numb it and that was excruciating painful just the needles and injecting that stuff and then a surgeon came and spoke to me and said, hey, I recommend, oh, sorry, anesthesiast came and spoke to me, said, mate, we're gonna put you under general. We don't reckon this is an operation we should do with you under local anesthetic. So, and I was like, look, I'm fine with that because when he put the needles in, I actually started to feel real faint and I was looking at my finger like, oh, this is gonna be a really big deal for the rest of my life now. I've lost like, you know, a decent part of my finger. And, um, and then the surgeon came and spoke to me and he said, look, we'll probably do what's called a partial, uh, partial... So detipping and... Yeah, detipping or partial decapitation of, of my first knuckle. I said, mate, please, if you can salvage 
as much as possible. I was like, I've already got stubby fingers as it is. I don't need them to be shorter. If you can leave as much um, finger as possible, I'd really appreciate it. He goes, okay, well, I'll see what I can do. Now the finger was kind of on an angle from the bite. So he said, at least we'll smooth it out. Otherwise it's gonna heal real bad. And he said, we'll try and get some skin and, and, and turn it over into a bit of a nub. So yeah, went through surgery. I don't remember a thing. They knocked me out. I woke up absolutely delirious for about an hour. People were talking to me. I don't recall anything. And uh, it was great really. And then, um, yeah, they wrapped it all up for me. I never got to see what my finger looked like after surgery, so it was a complete mystery. Never yeah. spoke to the surgeon again. I'd been speaking to the anesthesiologist, but I don't remember anything of the conversation. So I had no idea what had really happened. But I was looking <laughs> at my finger like, it doesn't look too much shorter. And basically... We slept in the car park of the hospital. Slept in the car park of the hospital in the mock, so I didn't have to drive. And plus you can't drive after a general, because I was groggy as. That's good. And they gave me some, what's called oxycodone, which is a... Opioid. An opioid. And, but they, they gave me uh, four tablets, I think it was, but I had to cut them in half every yeah, time. Not strong enough for you. So it turned out the next two days I was in the worst pain of my life it was so many levels above what had what it felt like just after being bitten by mm. the fish after surgery I was in agony so and they definitely hadn't given me enough and I kind of just braved it through and I probably in retrospect probably should have called the hospital gone back in and said there's no way I can handle mm, um, this sure. pain because they said with the um, opioid I can't also take Panadol Fort that is you can't mix them apparently so yeah, just it would hit me in waves where I would just like Ange was watching me. I was writhing in pain, like never experienced anything like it, which is amazing for just the tip of a finger. But man, it was off the charts. Sensitive, and then all the nerves and things like yeah, that. Yeah, and then two days later, then it just started to massively subside the pain. I would get you know racked by pain every once in a while, but it's okay. So I could like kind of play video games on the computer. One of the reasons being I wanted to keep my hand moving to keep the swelling down. And then went back and forth to hospital a few more times over the course of about a week. Went in to get um, the dressing redone on a Friday about a week later. Doctor looked at it and said, no, we're not ready to take the, Stitch the stitches out yet. Still looks like it's bleeding and needs time to heal. Mm. They redressed it with a watertight dressing. Two days later, I'm sitting in the truck going, there's something about my fingers doesn't feel right. So I end up like lifting it and sniffing it and oh this God. thing smells like could have gagged on the spot. So I'm like, oh no, it's infected. So I cut away the bandage. Yeah. My finger looks like a disheveled sausage that has been left <laughs> in the freezer or the refrigerator. It had gone completely white, like it had been wet. And my skin had started to unravel around my flesh. So it looked really bad. And I'm looking at like, oh man, I didn't even want to be near it because it smelled so bad. So oh, we straight away, I said, straight we'll to go hospital, back to the emergency. Went in and some theater nurses looked at it, they were like, oh man, that looks pretty bad. And so it I was went a on, Sunday evening, so yeah, not much people. So I went on drip, so antibiotic drip again. I already had been on drip originally. And uh, it kind of they couldn't came do right. Anything yeah, it came day. right. They redressed it, came right. I said, look, I don't want it dressed in the watertight dressing again. It definitely. It so, didn't like it. They so, did blood test just to make sure there was no infection, so that yeah. at least we were really And luckily, I'd got on top of it real fast, so it wasn't. They couldn't even detect it in my bloodstream the infection, which was good. So went back on another course of two different types of antibiotics yeah. and plus the, the next drip. Day we came back and you got your stitches removed. Yep, came back the the next day. Stitches got pulled out. I think maybe the stitches were in too long, and that's what caused the infection. Because when the nurse tried to remove two, they had fully grown over and they were horrendously painful to remove these stitches. Pulled them out and then it immediately felt so much better. Another doctor looked at it, a surgeon goes, mate, happy with how your finger's progressing. I'll put up some photos of what it's kind of looking like. I was looking at it like, man, it looks so bad. Uh, and then uh, he gave me an appointment to see a hand specialist. So I went in two days later, mm -hmm. saw a hand specialist and she gave me these wraps. So basically I have to do what's called stump uh, stump smoothing or stump wrapping so I wrap my finger and the idea is to help it heal as much like a finger as possible otherwise I think it's gonna go all mushroomy and apparently you can get jagged edges and stuff like that so 
I've still got to have the bandage on because it is still bloody. Well, not bloody, but it's still like soft healing. and weepy. Yeah, it's still healing. So as soon as I can have this bandage off, I'll be able to wrap it a bit tighter. And then I've also been given like a silicon <laughs> finger glove that I have to wear at night time once it's healed to also help shape the, shump, uh, shape the stump of my finger. So, We'd have known there would be so much involved. <laughs> yeah, and then I've got to also do muscular rehab exercises yeah, in yeah, case right. the tendons get stuck and go weird. But so far I'm moving my finger a lot and it seems okay. So, uh, and here we are. We're we decided that we Christmas. needed a change of scene. Like we've been staying put for more than three weeks in Mackay. And although it's been great in terms of facilities, like so thankful that we're not like remote yeah. in the middle of nowhere. We had access to everything we needed we got a bit stir crazy and mentally was probably a mentally bit of a, we had like some like a few rough days just be like are we gonna be here forever like oh we, we just sat in this caravan and park and just, like, i mean it seems like a you know like a first world it's, problem it's just because we're two very active people we're used to doing so much and you know no gym for me for three weeks alone feels really horrible i hate like just for my mental health i really don't like it and um and then, yeah, I'm basically just playing video games 24-7. We did some editing, ran out of editing to do. So literally got nothing to do apart from either watch a movie or, or, yeah. or play video games. So after a while, I just turned into a grub. And, uh, and so yeah, we just... planned a little, we're like, all right, the reward is going to be a little Christmas getaway. And here we are now on the Kupal Islands. So we are around like 10 kilometer offshore Yepu, so a little bit more south. We decided we needed a little getaway, a nice little island adventure for the end of the year. Yeah. We decided not to film it. This one is just for us mm -hmm. and you just make the most of it. Yeah, so I'm gonna try and get back in the water for a spear because I really don't wanna leave it um, as the last spear mission for the year being that horrible situation. So I really wanna jump back on the horse, get out there. I've found a way to waterproof my hand. I'm sure a doctor would tell me not to, but you know, it's gotta be done. So Chris is yeah. a bit. <laughs> but you know. But at the same time I can understand. Yeah, yeah, definitely wanna get back out there. And for us it's the last Christmas, just the two of us. Yeah. Next year they will be little boy yep. with us so yeah little man so feels a bit surreal to think about it but yeah we've got us all a big update um about like baby we do uh, we've, we've up. got some yeah we've got a big, big change, uh, big change actually that, that we've kind of come up with yeah uh, so once very it's recently finalized we'll uh, share with you and yeah in the meantime so wishing you a happy, happy new, new year, year. I hope you surround it with your loved ones and family. Yeah. And thank you so much, everyone, for the support this year. Yeah, thanks so much. It's been such a good year. It's been a crazy year. And um, we have you guys to thank for a huge amount of it. So, yeah, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much for, for watching the videos, for, you know, all your comments, your likes, your support and stuff. It does mean a huge amount. We're not the, the biggest, like... We don't go on YouTube always saying about how grateful for we are and stuff because we would hate for it to come across fake. Every week. So yeah, so but honestly a huge thank you and, and we are really grateful and it's enabled us to be able to do to this. be out here and do this and have fingers bitten off and have a baby <laughs> on the way and stuff. So no, it's awesome. So hopefully we give you some entertainment at home in exchange and um, that's the idea, right? And hopefully it'll encourage you guys to get out here and get some exploring in push outside your comfort zone, do something a bit crazy and you know, there's, there's yeah, you've got to, got to be done, right? Got to be done. So yeah, happy new year from from me and Ange and, and little one. <laughs> Soon you'll find out his name and you'll get and to you see him live. And you will take you along next year. Awesome. See you guys. See you next year.